The first free game on the list today is Fortnite. I'll just say one thing about it. Fortnite is a perfect example of a game that you do not ever need to spend money on. The only thing you'll get by throwing money at it is cosmetic stuff, so you can literally enjoy the full game for free. However, and this goes for any of the games on the list, if you have a small child playing these games, you might want to make sure that it's not easy for them to start buying stuff on your credit card, because it'll happen. Whether they mean to do it or not, these games will trick them into it, so be careful. That goes for all of these but especially Fortnite. <laughs> you can get dogs in backpacks. I mean, at some point, you just gotta buy stuff. <laughs> anyway, the next one, as I was saying, is Pokemon Quest. Do you guys remember Pokemon Quest? At some point last year, Nintendo decided they were gonna go Pokemon crazy and just throw a ton of these Pocket Monster games on the Switch. They announced the Pokemon Let's Go games, as well as a brand new main series title coming this year, which ended up recently becoming Pokemon Sword and Shield. But also on that very same day, they dropped out of nowhere for free another Pokemon game called Pokemon Quest. I downloaded it that night and fell in love with it. I would go as far as to say I was addicted to it for about three days. <laughs> and I mean, I loved it. It was like three straight days of I just couldn't put that thing down. There was just so much that just kept me playing. I really enjoyed the strange combat, the weird level designs, and the randomness of maybe getting a shiny Pokemon stroll up to your camp. There's something about this game that's like a weird phenomenon. Games like this before that have the same phenomena now it's a mysterious thing about the game that when you're playing it you just keep wanting to play it like another level and another level you just get addicted and it's just fun to keep playing but as soon as you stop playing and you take a breather from the game maybe even for a day or two there's almost nothing driving you back to the game you have so many other things that are probably better than that that you want to play instead for free that's absolutely worth it. <laughs> like, do you guys like Overwatch? Of course you do, everyone does. Do you wanna play Overwatch on the Switch? Of course you do, everyone does. And do you wanna play Overwatch for free on the Switch? Of course you do, everyone does. But you can't. What you can do is play Paladins for free on the Switch, which is pretty much Overwatch. Just not as good but still good. No, in all seriousness, Paladins is a really, really fun game. You can actually buy the game for 30 bucks and you'll unlock all the characters and just everything that goes along with it. Or you can just download it for free, have a few characters, and as you play, you unlock more. If you haven't played Paladins before or Overwatch before or a game like this before, this is the easiest way I can explain it. Assuming you've played a MOBA before, like League of Legends or Dota, and then you wrap it all in a very bright, bubbly, and cartoony skin with over-the-top, crazy, wacky characters, and you have a first-person shooter with a ton of different abilities and an ultimate ability that looks really cool and it's really fun to play. And unlike Pokemon Quest, this is a game you'll keep coming back to, assuming you enjoy it, which I do. It's easy to pick up and play a few rounds whenever you want, and it's always a fun time. It's the kind of game where even if your team is losing, you can still have fun. Of course, if you keep losing, it becomes not fun pretty quick, but you can still have fun. Oh, and while we're on the subject of MOBAs, I may as well talk about the next two games, the first of which being Smite. Like League of Legends and Dota, but played in third person. It's a really interesting concept, and again, I like it a lot. Obviously, it's free, or else it wouldn't be on this list, but you can also buy it. And it's the same deal as Paladins, where one way you have all the characters unlocked, and the other way you have to earn them. And we've gone from Pokemon Quest, a game that's a little addicting, but you might forget it, to Paladins, a game that's, you know, somewhere in the middle, you'll pick it up every now and then, to Smite, a game where you can easily spend hours and hours and hours just in one session, because each game can last about an hour, and you won't ever stop at just one game, and then you'll come back the next night, and the next night, if you think you can handle it, there's a ton of fun to be had in Smite for free. And the next free MOBA is Arena of Valor. Now, I haven't actually played this one. It looks like a more traditional MOBA, again, like the two that I keep mentioning, Dota and League of Legends, where it's more akin to a top-down strategy style game. And if you're into the more classic style MOBAs, Arena of Valor might be better for you than Smite. A new MOBA is a huge investment. It takes hours and hours and hours to learn the game and get good at it. So as, as much as I like the genre, I'm not ready to jump into Arena of Valor just yet. I, I don't have a week's worth of time just to practice. Now, I don't think I'm out of line to say if you have a Switch, you should have all three of these games. Mario Odyssey, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Super Smash Brothers. And I'll excuse you if you only have two of those three. And if you only have one of those three, I'll still acknowledge your existence if we're walking past each other on the street, but I will be subtly judging you in my mind and wondering what the heck is wrong with you. However, it's probably safe to say you most likely have Smash Brothers in your house, 
if you have a Switch. But if you're in the very unfortunate circumstance of not having that game and wanting that game, but you do have a Switch, well, you can play a light version of this game for free. And that game's called Brawlhalla. And if you haven't seen this game before, I really don't have to describe it all that much because it's literally Smash Brothers. It's a Smash Brothers clone. Maybe hardcore Brawlhalla fans will fight me on that and point out all the subtle differences, but I played it. It's it's Smash Brothers. It it wants to be Smash Brothers. It has its own personality for sure. It's just it's just it's a it's a not as good Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers game, but it's free and it is good. I, <laughs> I don't want to take that away from it. If Smash Brothers was never a thing and just Brawlhalla was, it would be a hit for sure. It's just Smash Brothers is a thing. <laughs> Fallout Shelter is another perfect example of a free-to-play game that's just free to play and you don't have to put any money into it to enjoy it. Bethesda didn't care too much about making a ton of money off of it, so they made it just fun to play. And you can spend money on it. You can buy lunch boxes, which will unlock a bunch of things for your characters, like weapons, or even unlocking actual characters, but it's not necessary. And the game ended up being a huge hit. It exploded and a ton of people did put money into it, so Bethesda kept supporting it. And it's no surprise is that because this game was developed and built for a mobile phone, that it works really well on the Switch. Because the game still runs in the background, like it used to on phones. You wouldn't have it open all the time, you'd be texting or playing other games, or you just wouldn't be using your phone. But meanwhile, the game is still active. But it feels like a live 24-7 living, breathing ecosystem. You start with a very small ragtag group of survivors, and you start to build a colony around them, layers and layers deep into the ground. And again, this is just a fun free game to play in between playing other games. Whenever you're done with that five hour Final Fantasy IX session and you're about to log off and go to bed, you can quickly check on your Fallout shelter and see how your survivors are doing. Make sure they're fed, make sure they have water, make sure none of them have died, and then go to sleep, wake up in the morning and check on them again. Or forget about the game completely for three months and then sign back in and find out that everyone is dead and you got game over. I don't know if it works that way. We could find out. <laughs> I uninstalled it. So yeah, that they're probably all dead. That's what happens when your channel is about reviewing eShop games every week. I need space. I end up deleting stuff. I do want to add the long-awaited Undertale sequel, Deltarune, to this list because chapter one is free and you'll get about three hours of free gameplay out of it. However, if you love it and you will, everyone will and everyone does, you will have to pay for the other chapters. It's only the first one that's free to get you hooked and then have you play the rest. That's how confident they are that you will buy the rest. You can have the first one for free. And, and yeah, it, it's good. Obviously. The next free game blows my freaking mind, and that's Warframe. I made an entire video about this game. You can watch it down below if you want to find out all the reasons why it's so insane. But to summarize it, I still don't know how this game is on the Switch. It is such a huge, expansive, gorgeous looking game. It's one of those games that when you see it running on the Switch, it feels like a dream. Warframe is actually a teeny tiny little bit like Anthem, in the sense of you have like these Iron Man suits that have these crazy special abilities and you kill a bunch of enemies. It's pretty much where the similarities finish, I guess. However, Warframe does have some really expansive open world areas where you can fly around. And that is a lot like Anthem. And again, it's these areas in particular that just blow my mind when I'm playing it handheld in bed on my Switch. And not only does it look absolutely gorgeous with all these different lighting effects hitting me straight in the face, but I'm literally flying around huge open areas and just landing and killing enemies and going on my way. Now, some have argued if you really want to level up quickly and get access to the good weapons and the good stuff in the game, you will have to pump some of your own money into it. However, I, I don't feel that way. I really don't. And the developers are actually proud of the fact that this is a balanced free-to-play experience, meaning if you don't want to spend money on it, you don't have to. It's not a necessity. You can do and acquire everything in the game for free. But I played this game for hours and I never felt the need to buy anything. Maybe if I was diving into some of the PvP stuff, which I never actually ended up doing, I might be more encouraged to spend some money, but just going through the campaign and completing it at my own pace, I had a lot of fun for free. And if this is a game that piques your interest, I have a video about it, again, down below. The last two free games are actually like way more than two games technically, but you also kind of have to pay for it, but they are free. 
What do I mean by that? <laughs> well, to access any of the games I'm about to talk about, you do have to buy the Nintendo online service, which is 20 bucks a year, so really not that bad at all. Or if you do it monthly, I think it's like three or four bucks a month. We're a really, really cheap online service, and if you think about it, you kind of need it anyway to play online. Like if you want to play Smash online, or Splatoon online, or Mario Kart, or really it, just anything. So once you have it, here are the free games you can play. The first one being the multiple of ones, which is the Nintendo online service itself, will give you access to a load of classic NES games. And I'm sure as we're all aware by now, because I'm really late to the news, Nintendo also just announced that Super Nintendo games, Game Boy Advance games, and GameCube games are coming to this service later this month. Nope, I'm lying. Sorry to get your hopes up. Remember to smash that like button. <laughs> I really do want that to happen, but yeah, I was lying, sorry. We do have NES games though. There are some good ones on there. There are some bad ones on there, but they're all free. And you might have guessed it, but my favorite free game on Switch, Tetris 99. I love this game, man. It's just Tetris. Like Tetris has always been fun, but with the added excitement of playing against 98 other players at the same time competing to be number one in what is by far the best battle royale game anyone has ever made, it just makes this game priceless and it's free. What a combo. Every time I make one of these list videos, I blow myself away with the quality of games that are on the Switch. Like when I make my eShop videos every month or so, I'm like, how are there 10 more great games to go out and buy? And when I had the idea to look at how many great free games were on the Switch, I was amazed that I managed to get 10 so easily. 